Hey everyone, Jay here from Pistol Star again, and just like I promised in our security concerns video on designing and implementing a secure portal, I'm back to take a deeper look at another one of the big five considerations I introduced you to in our last video. For this video, I'd like to dive a little deeper into the area of one of everyone's favorite topics, that of compliance. As more and more of our lives have moved online, we increasingly find ourselves dealing with both local and national compliance issues that are designed to protect our online identity. If you're providing access to a sensitive data online, then there is a better than average chance that you're required to be both aware and compliant with a number of regulations. Things like HIPAA, FERPA, COPPA, Sarbanes-Oxley, and PCI all play a predominant role in corporations, healthcare, and higher education's compliance landscape, not to mention local regulations that may augment some of these more well-known regulatory standards. It would be very difficult and honestly rather boring to sit here and list all of the areas of compliance that each of these regulations demand. And honestly, you're better served by either engaging some of the great online resources that I've listed on the screen here, or possibly by retaining a professional that deals specifically in these areas. That said, there are a number of overriding themes that come into play with regards to making sure your portal presents, stores, and protects secure data. No matter what the regulation you may find yourself dealing with, one of the foundational concerns they all have is what is known as PII, or Personally Identifiable Information. Simply put, PII is any piece of data that can be used to trace the online identity of a user to their real life identity. You know, some PII is obvious, things like social security number, for example, whereas others can be a little bit more obscure, things like birthday, phone number, license plate, mother's maiden name, they all fall into the PII category. You may think that something like a birthday date is pretty ubiquitous and that any hacker would have a 1 in 365 chance of guessing it. So why work so hard to protect it? While you're correct in assessing the odds on guessing correctly, you need to look at each piece of data as a piece of a larger puzzle. Knowing your birthday and your mother's maiden name, for instance, greatly increases the chance of identifying your personal identity. The more pieces of data that are unveiled greatly increases the chance of true identity discovery. When you design and deploy your web portal, keeping the idea of securely protecting your data should be first and foremost in your mind. While each regulation has its own unique fingerprint in what they're expecting you to adhere to, there are a number of common denominators that become apparent. For instance, things like fully encrypting PII related data and requiring fully secure methods of access. Highly sensitive data, like medical or financial records, require highly secure access points. Do you really want your data traveling over an unsecured Wi-Fi or other non-secure location? Neither do the regulatory agencies. Many regulations also have strict guidelines and enforcement requirements about an individual's password. Things like password length, difficulty, and expiration all come into play with regards to compliance, so you want to make certain that you have provision for these requirements. Then there's the matter of convenience issues for the end user, such as having the ability to reset a forgotten password or renew a password that has expired. Giving your users the ability to handle these types of activities themselves is quickly being recognized as a best practice in the audit community. You know, whether it's a full-on audit or a self-compliance audit, many of these regulations are also going to want to see that you're keeping track of your users' behavior as they try to gain access to your portal. Having the ability to track and display when, where, and how often a user logs into a system is a critical audit component. Many auditors will also want to see how many login failures a user may have to see if there's a chance that their ID has been compromised. Having the ability to access and report out on this data becomes a critical aspect of any audit. Here's another common thread with these audit requirements, user authentication. Many regulations are now viewing the password as only the first step in gaining access to sensitive and secure data, and they're looking at two-factor authentication as the second step in making sure that the user is who they say they are. At its heart, two-factor is all about identifying someone based on something they know and something they have to prove they are who they say they are. So while a password is great for answering the something they know part of the puzzle, something like a text message, phone call, or email with a one-time password is the critical component of providing the quote-unquote something they have element of the equation. Regulations have the ability to leave your head spinning, especially with some components being very easy to understand while others are much more nuanced. If I could leave you with one takeaway, it would simply be this. 
Good compliance practices start very early in the design and implementation phase of any IT project. Designing features and capabilities with the end product in mind is much easier than trying to shoehorn a solution in after the fact. As always, thanks for joining us and keep your eyes open for video number four in this series that will talk about portal integration points. This is Jay, Vice President of Cloud Computing at Pistol Star, saying thank you and we'll see you real soon.